Good day, folks. It's DIY Guy123 here. Today I'm bringing you another do it yourself video. We've got a 2012 Kubota B3300SU. What I'm going to tell you is going to be relevant for any tractor that uses hydraulic lines that are flexible, rubber ones like this, with a front end loader or a backhoe or other hydraulic lines on the machine. Really has nothing to do with Kubota. So this tractor has about 600 hours on it. It's been very well cared for. And just over time, um, a hose rubbed against a part of the frame right here. And uh, it wasn't protected and it rubbed against a part of the front end loader frame right there. And it wore through right here. Now it wore through, wearing through the rubber itself, that doesn't cause the leak wearing through the rubber. What causes the leak is when when the rubber's worn through and then the steel reinforcing uh, underneath it wears through then you can spring a leak and what happened was so this hose in my hand is worn in two places right here which we didn't know about until we took it off and then this one and so when the loader goes up and down these hoses move back and forth and it just chafed against there now this hose has a hose protective covering but it doesn't cover the area that was at risk so I bought new hose protective covering and I'm going to install it so that this doesn't happen again okay so what are the symptoms of a hydraulic hose breaking well if you're using an implement and all of a sudden you know if your loader suddenly falls to the ground without warning well that could be a symptom that a hose blew uh, or the backhoe or any other implement if it falls to the ground or if you go to lift something up and your lever controls don't seem to have any effect on the implement, then you likely blew a hose. And uh, when that happens, it, there's extreme care that needs to be taken. So you do not want to go close to the area where the leak is at all. You need to step back and just assess. So the first thing I did was turn the tractor off. In fact, somebody else was operating it and I happened to walk by it and I noticed it dripping. And what caused this to rupture not cause it to wear, but what really finally caused this to rupture was the backhoe or the front end loader was jammed into the ground, part, you know, well, and they were using the backhoe and they wanted to move the tractor ahead without getting off the backhoe and without raising the loader. So they jammed the bucket of the backhoe in some hard material and pushed the tractor ahead. And that caused pretty extreme force. And the hose that ended up blowing was one that controlled the cylinder. All right, so um, I noticed some dripping, so we shut the tractor off right away. And I would say it's way more than dripping. If we were actually using the loader, like lifting material and digging in and so on, every time the loader control was moved to uh, to curl the bucket or, or retract the bucket, open or close the bucket, I can't remember. Every time we would use the lever for that in diagnosis, it would just pour fluid out. Um, so it was very easy to find the leak. In other scenarios, when you aren't really sure, you see a wet area, or in some cases, you won't even see a wet area. If there's a pinhole in a hose and the leak comes directly, say, towards the camera, there might not be any on the rest of the tractor. And it, it can come out of there at such a high pressure that I think, I haven't seen this myself with hydraulic fluid, but it wouldn't surprise me if it kind of turns into a mist and it's very difficult to see. So one method that you can use to find that is to take, wear gloves, wear safety eye protection, long sleeve shirt to protect all your skin, and take a piece of cardboard and move it along the hoses and then look at the cardboard to see if any hydraulic fluid built up. So that's how you can detect a leak. Now let's get to fixing the leak. Well, uh, I didn't think to film this until I already had the hose off. <sighs> Regardless, um, this I'll tell you how to do it. So. These rubber hoses are in places where things flex and that's generally where the wear will be. And in this scenario, one end of the hose was screwed right onto this fitting right here. And then it fed through this little protective sleeve and it came around and under and under and down and it plugged into that quick connect right there. So that's the routing that this hose took. So to get a quick connect off,
you can pull on them and they won't come off but the best way the only way to do it is take see this ring that rotates here if you pull this this way that releases balls on the inside and now you can see those ball bearings they get released when this is pulled back and when that happens then you can release the quick connect from hoses so this little protective cover I'll pull all these ball bearings back See how easy the cover goes in and out like that? And then when I let it go, the cover won't come out. So that's how you release the quick connect. And then on the other end of the hose, it was an 18 mil, 18 mil here. Of course, all my tools fall. 16 mil here. So obviously that is a, a fitting that doesn't turn. It's molded to this line. You do not want to rotate this. But in the case of the old hose, here's the new hose, but same thing. There's a swivel on the hose that connects there, like this one. I know that that turns against this. This does not turn. So I would hold this one steady and then turn this one. So I opened that up and, and released this one fully. Now, of course, if your system's fully, like, catastrophically leaked, then you won't have any, um, any uh, fluid left to leak out. Um, but if you only had a minor leak, when you undo these fittings, you likely will get some fluid leakage, so it's good to have a drain pan ready before you even start this. Now, this sleeve, as I mentioned, goes down and curls around. I didn't want to just pull the hose out because... to be continued after the lawn's mowed, I guess. Okay, the lawn mowing has stopped, so we're good there. So one thing to point out is the quick connect. The quick connect that was on your old hose, you can definitely reuse. There's nothing wrong with that. To get it off, it would have required a 14 mil wrench on this and a 19 mil wrench on this. So, um, when I went to the hydraulic shop, the fellow there said, oh, do you want me to just change, transfer the quick connect over to your new hose? I said, sure. So he threaded it on there, but he didn't, uh, and he didn't tighten it, so I guess that's good. But it's supposed to have Teflon tape. Now, some of them, some types of hydraulic fittings do and some don't. I'm not the authority on hydraulic fittings, and I don't really know. I just know that when I look at the original, there's Teflon tape on there. When you're dealing with uh, hydraulic fluid, you should be you should be using the yellow Teflon tape, not the white stuff. This is made for the oil and gas industry. Okay, so I've threaded my quick coupler on there. These things don't need to be cranked on like uh, with a four foot pipe for leverage. They're just snug and then a little bit more than snug. And uh, so I'm going to just do that right now before I forget. And you always have the chance if it's loose or leaking to snug it up later. Give it another of a turn later on so that's as far as we're gonna go with that hey. so the next thing before I feed this through is to cut this uh, hose protector sleeve to length okay so we measured our uh, measured our new hose and it's it, it's about that long I think this is gonna be probably too long but better too long than too short and obviously this won't fit over the quick connect end so we're gonna start over the, the non quick connect end Okay, so now we have our protective sleeve across the whole uh, whole thing. And being so long, it's actually going to be difficult to find another leak in the future, but uh, if this hose should leak, but anyway, that's the way it goes. So you see this rope here. I put this through the uh, original sleeve because I wasn't sure how difficult it was going to be to drag the new hose through. Um, so what I've got is the rope. I tied it onto the end of the hose and then drew the hose through and now I have the rope through the whole sleeve. So it's going to be a lot easier, a lot easier for me to, to draw the skinny end through than the big fat uh, quick connect end. So what I will do is tie the skinny end back to the rope and I also want to make sure I tie this protective sleeve, like get that all bound up too. Otherwise, it might bunch up as I'm towing, it, towing the rope through.
Poor editing. Yeah. Poor editor Steve. I know. <laughs> Okay, so with any luck, I should be able to pull that right through. Now, helper, I don't want that to be in the dirt, the other end. Let's see where this looks. Yeah, it'll be okay. Okay, so I'll pull down here and hopefully draw that up there. We're all through both ends. And again, to release the quick fitting, you pull this little collar back and the cap comes off. That's the dust cap. And anybody knows what kind of knot you would, how you would refer to this, I'd be interested in you putting it in the comments. Not this knot, but the, yeah. It's a clove hitch. Is it? Okay. So what we did was we put our, our uh, this is a rubber doodad that keeps the hoses just sort of separated and the quick connect had to go through there and I thought this might have been hard but in fact it's a flexible rubber so it just went through. So right now I'm going to try and line this quick fitting up, Get rid of that. This, this female onto that male and I got to push back the collar and after you push it ahead you'll hear a click which we did and to just really prove it's on there you, it's so hard to do because the hose is all jammed up, but you want to rotate that collar back and forth to just seat those balls. Just a couple of little turns like that, seat those balls. And that is that end. And I'm pushing the hose back so it's the same bend. There's an original hose, or one of the hoses. There's the hose I just put in. There's the same bend. And you'll notice this one has the protective sleeve all the way to the top. There's a little bit of grit in that thread I want to get out. Probably a good idea to wear rubber gloves so you don't get hydraulic fluid all over yourself. There's not much hydraulic fluid right now, as I told you, but when we, when we dismantled this, there, there was some. So here we have in my this hand the old hose. So look at the diameter of the hole and look at the hole of the fitting. Oh my gosh, does that mean that this hose is not the right, like they're not the right fitting? It will, it'll either work perfectly fine or it'll have a flow restriction so that the bucket curls much more slowly. Ah, that's what you get when you deal with amateurs at the, the repair shop. I should have checked this before I bought it and installed the whole thing. Anyway, it's on here now, so we're going to put it on and see, but we'll, if it's slow to curl or, or uh, or uncurl, we'll have to get the hose remade with the right fittings that have the right hole. So I cleaned the screwdriver to see, and so certainly that, that screwdriver fits up in that hose, that steel hose, the original, and it won't fit there. So the diameter of this is not the right diameter. I'm really annoyed by that. But we're going to put it on because I want to get the tractor mobile again. And I guess this will be the practice run for when we get the right hose. And snugging this up, you're not, there's no Teflon tape required for this fitting and you're not using a four foot pipe. It's just, that's it. Like when I took the original off of there, it barely, I wouldn't say it was barely tight, but you did not have to work to get that off. Now one nice thing I'll show you is in here, this hose is now protected by the, uh, the sleeve. So um, I'm going to start it up, check for leaks, check for operation. Now, of course, there's air all in that line. So I'm going to cycle this cylinder several times um, before I put it under any load. And uh, it may act erratically until all the fluids out. It could like if I retract the bucket, it could go, and or or I may move the lever and nothing might happen for a while. So just cycle it five to ten times and get the air purged, and then you're ready to go. Of course, if you have a blown uh, hydraulic line, you need to check your dipstick 
um, to make sure that it's not low on hydraulic fluid. So follow your manual procedure for that. That concludes this video. Good luck with your do-it-yourself projects if you like my video.